others, Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more worldwide TV entertainment, women on TV. To, I, uh, see, I'm so excited, I'm mixing up my thing. Women on TV. <laughs> TV I T247 on Franklin, Tennessee. And so this is a show that just came together really, really quickly. Eileen Shapiro, who Ruby, you and I, and Scott and Jared know, is always, say, Brian, I want to put someone on your show. I said, okay. And I couldn't really who, hear who it was. I'm like, I heard it was Scott. I didn't know it was Jared. I've been wanting to get Jared on the show. And then she goes, you're going to like Ruby because he did so-and-so. I'm like, who? And I had a bad connection. So D D D <laughs> Danielle and I were doing a show before and I said, who do you want to talk to? Because I'm always teasing her who she wants to talk to. So she goes, I really like Scott Page. I'm like, well, I got to talk to Scott at one o'clock. You want to be on the show? And then I was going back and forth with Maddie. I'm like, Maddie, do you want to be on the show? And she goes, sure. What time? So that's how it came together. So I got my two. You got Scott and Jared. So let's do six people. So Danielle Martin, let's tell Ruby who you are. And you're coming from Portugal. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Brian. So Ruby, my name is Daniel Martins, of course. <laughs> and, I and my am, name uh, is Ruby Mazur. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> and I help nice authors you. and entrepreneurs to build their remarkable brands and experience sustainable success through a personal branding process. You know, I'm a personal branding strategist. Okay, and I am based in Portugal, but I work with clients all around the world. I am also the branding manager at Hasmark Publishing, uh, Hasmark Publishing which is a uh, Canadian-based uh, publishing house, but we work with clients all around the globe, and we are making history. <laughs> okay, Maddie, Terrific. tell Ruby who you are. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Maddie and I live here in uh, Ontario, Canada. So I was originally first introduced to Brian because my mom actually just published a book through Hasmark Publishing Company. So Danielle, I don't think we've met officially, but I'm Maddie and I'm JL's daughter. Um, so yeah, she uh, that's how that connection was. And then um, Brian was like, oh, well, Maddie, we'd love to have you on the show as well uh, one day because my mom's uh, book is loosely based around me. And it's really awesome timing because Brian's been a, a huge help um, in helping me. I just opened up my own e-com business. It's a clothing brand. It's called 478. And uh, the brand is really just all about the importance of connecting with the present moment in the fast paced society we live in, you know, really just taking a moment, taking a breath. 478 is actually a breathing technique um, that's commonly used throughout the world. So, you know, breathe in for four seconds, hold for seven, out for eight. Um, and, you know, just the benefits of that and just really connecting and uh, to ourselves and disconnecting for our ex from our external world. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Okay, Ruby, go ahead. Talk about your iconic paintings and everything that you've done, because now I remember who you are. Go ahead. Well, I got out of college and became, uh, I was 21 years old. By luck, I became the executive art director for Paramount Records at 21. Yep. That first year, I was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Album Covers. Uh, the last cover I did for Paramount was uh, a little keyboard player that my brother and I represented and uh, his name was Billy Joel. Yep. So with that I promised Billy I would do I think I'm being That's okay we'll be swiping. Because the one and only Scott Page is on. Hello, excuse me. Of course he sneezes <laughs> when he comes on. Excuse me. Ah, uh, so, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby. So, he's gone. So Ruby was just telling us what was going on. So since when he comes back, so Scott, tell Danielle from Portugal and Maddie from Ontario, Canada, who you are, what you're doing, because Scott, everybody, has a lot of things always going on. This is why we were doing this show. And then we're waiting for his friend Jared to come on because Ruby was in the middle of telling us the story and he got interrupted. Scott, take it away. 
Ruby got interrupted. How could that be? Ruby's my new best friend. I don't know. Pal. Is that Stephen? Oh, that's that, yeah, Rudy. It's Stephen here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to get back on here. Jared screwed me up. Oh, you can't find oh. your little phone. You need your little phone. Is the little the video's turned off? Are you on your um? Uh, you're on your iPhone. Yes, I am. So you got to touch the touch the screen down there at the bottom and get the little menu to come up and turn your camera back on. Shit. And look at Jarrett. Jarrett's looking cool as usual. Obviously, he's got Disneyland in the background because I can see uh, Harper's working there in the background getting some work done. Oh, there he is. His audio. He can't hear yet. See, this is the fun part, Scott, about technology, isn't it? So until yep. Jarrett gets its audio up, Ruby back scott take it away tell these two young ladies what's going on in scott page's world well we're 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 having a great time here over at cosmic wire rocking and rolling um you know i connected hello? up with jared's hello up oh, you there oh, there you are okay i'm coming in All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really really fine-tuned uh, episode here we're a well-oiled machine here. well-oiled machine <laughs> i think ruby uh, just dropped off yeah, hey, Jared, so it's good seeing you again. So, hey, Brian, how you doing? I didn't realize we were you were the same Brian I was talking to. So this is really yeah, fun. I had to hip him up to this whole thing, right? Well, we there's talking. only there's only one of you guys. So, Jared, hold on. We're gonna have Scott tell everything what's going on, and then we'll have Ruby coming back. because Ruby's coming back. See, oh, so the the girls got it done. It's just guys putting things up right today. Oh, all the time, uh, every day. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we're very, very excited. Uh, Jared and me have now partnered up. We're kind of building out. He started Cosmic Wire. I started my company. We're kind of bringing all these things together. And we met up with our brother, Ruby here. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Mazur, ladies and gentlemen. Rudy, Rudy. No. Hey, Stephen. How are you? <laughs> we kid each other about that because I keep calling him Rudy, and then he calls me Stephen. So it's perfect. Hi, buddy. Uh <laughs> Good to see your smiling face here. I'm happy to see okay. you. Okay. So um, anyway, we, how are you, my boy? It's Ruby. He's here. We're here. We're all uh, back together here. Yeah, things are great, man. Um, yeah, so I was just telling Brian and them kind of, you know, we met up. We kind of joining forces. Then we got to meet uh, uh, my buddy here, Ruby. And, and, you know, actually, it was really fun getting to meet Ruby because when I got over there, we were over in Maui and we were driving around in his car and he started asking me, hey, do you know this guy? I go, yeah. And the next thing you know, he's calling up Bill Chaplin from the Sons of Chaplin and Tico Torres from, you know, from Bon Jovi's band. And it's fun that we knew had a lot of people that we knew the same folks. So we uh, kind of hit it off real, real uh, beautifully. And our, 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 our past is connecting. So we had a great time. Our rendezvous. Well, yeah. I, I was introducing myself when Jared screwed me up trying to okay. come in on this meeting. Well, um, he does that a lot. Did you I tell them who or what I was? No, no, you go. I, I just jumped on too. I didn't realize where we were and everything got messed up. So go. you go first. That's a, it wasn't you. It was Jared that screwed me up. I blame myself. It's always him. He was it's probably always. sleeping again. Yeah. All right, so Ruby, you on talking about Billy Joel and how you started to come up with everything with Paramount. Well, yeah, and then I opened up my own company designing album covers, and we were doing about 30 album covers a week. This is when albums were like real artwork, and uh, I was doing covers for, well, Billy Joel, Elton John, Steely Dan, Ray Charles, B.B. King, Jimmy Buffett, Jim Croce, over 3,000 covers. And um, Easy. when this whole 50th year was coming about, I, uh, a year ago, I was diagnosed with a 2.5 centimeter brain tumor. And I was given six months to live. And uh, that's quite an awakening. And I was hooked up with my gallery here on Maui. And I said, you know, I really have to do this final exhibition as something spectacular. And as fate would have it, I hooked up with Jared and Scott. And we came up with this NFT art exhibition. And it's going like crazy. 
Now, Scott's been talking about these things because Danielle, Danielle's in Portugal, Maddie's in Canada. And it's one of those things where all of these, I call Scott a brainchild in my own head because he's always on working something. And then when I met Jared at Sue Wong's event, we love this. And then Jared's been, and I, and I've been enticed with Jared ever since Scott, you told me that this is someone to watch. So I've been right. watching Jared the whole time. Jared, talk about it. Then we'll go back to Scott. Oh, uh, great. Uh, thanks, Brian. I, I was equally uh, excited about meeting you too, man. Like, like everything that you're doing. Um, I, I'm originally an artist producer. I'm on any fragile music right now, which is a part of universal. And, and on top of that, I've been kind of quarterbacking marketing campaigns for labels, Indian major, for the last decade or so. And so when I created Cosmic Wire, that was just an extension of, of kind of what I was doing as a producer because it got to the point where I was working with so many artists that the label thought it made sense to put them all under one roof because they already own half of it because they own half of me, basically. So it was just a kind of a natural evolution of where, where this all came from. And then I kind of poached all of the marketing teams I've been using for the last decade and then brought in some of my old Silicon Valley friends, kind of created this really forward thinking multi-conglomerate media company, which, which the essential premise is just that we're here to fight for content creators and fight for artists because like I'm in a predatorial deal right now. And I know lots of people that are in other predatorial deals and I've been through all this kind of stuff. So I completely get like artists being screwed, um, having gone through it, you know, myself. And so, the whole idea for this company is to surround the company around the artists as opposed to artists who have to outsource and pay for all of their services. Every single person inside of Cosmic Wire is on a back-end royalty system. So it's really for the first time ever, even our attorneys actually, um, everyone's on the same side of the table, right? The only way anyone makes any money here is if, is if the projects are successful. So it really incentivizes all of these kind of people around the artists as opposed to the artists trying to incentivize people around them, which is the whole model is just to kind of turn the, the model around because at the end of the day it's the content creators that are that drive the industry right and this this company is, is built around that idea and so ruby was just kind of someone that really kind of pulled at my heartstrings because i get what happened to him through the years and i kind of get how people have taken advantage of it and how he hasn't really got the credit that he deserves so this was like something i really wanted to shine a light on and, and it just really is kind of the heartbeat of what we're doing as a company too. So there's just a lot of synergy there. So it's been amazing getting to know Ruby. Like he's a good friend now. He's an inspiration to me. He's kind of, you know, someone I really look up to and, and I love like being a part of this whole thing with him. So it's been a really special project, you know, for us as a company too. And I can't think of a better way to, to show the world what we're going to do with NFTs than partnering up with Ruby Mazer in this whole project. So this is only the first... Back. This is only the beginning of this. We've got a lot more projects we're going to be doing after this, and uh, we're going to be working with Rudy, uh, with Rudy quite a lot. <laughs> so, talk, so, Scott, talk about this. You've had this yep. this smile on your face since the Sue Wong event. Yep. Uh, when you and Jared and the girl were there, and you had a bunch of things you were talking about then. So, from the Sue Wong event to where you are today. What's been going on with everybody you've been talking to? Because Danielle's in Portugal. She loves Leland Scar. So oh, she yeah. paid attention to you. And she was honored to be coming on with you because it was a last minute thing. So she goes, I want to meet Scott Page. I'm like, turns out we got Scott coming on at one. So that's how that came out. Great. Yeah. Yeah. It's really actually been very exciting. It really all really happened when I, you know, I got I was getting approached by all a bunch of different people on my NFTs. Uh, for my Pink Floyd stuff, right? And then I just saw all these deals were not very good deals. And it was it was still still the Wild West. And I come out of technology, having technology companies and things. And so I realized that, you know, wait a minute, I think I'm going to go, you know, go my own route. So I had actually called a, uh, connected up with a friend that's um, a blockchain guy that's been really instrumental in a lot of building out some of these uh, like EOS built out those platforms. He's uh, in the blockchain. We started talking about, you know, this NFT space and going and start and build something. And then I met up with Jared and I started seeing what Jared had with his whole uh, marketing engine and the pieces that they've built there at Cosmic, which is really special. And um, we just hit it off, right? So every night we were on the phone, man, doing Zoom calls, talking all night, talking about this stuff. And then so I decided I was going to go launch my stuff with Cosmic Wire. From that, we started talking more about, well, hey, I can, I've got all these people with great IP. How about if I start bringing them in? I had also started working with my thing that I was doing with Livin, which you know, which is that the, the our whole live performance, which actually kind of ties in. So we basically started really kind of 
brainstorming this whole thing together. And now it's kind of grown into this new thing. And Leland Scalar is one of our next ones. He's actually part of the campaign we're doing with Ruby right now. Uh, this whole fuck cancer thing that's going on. We've got a whole deal that we're uh, going out to raise some money to really support some of these, uh, uh, you know, different uh, organization stuff working on the, you know ways to fight cancer ruby's story is really interesting once he gets into ex kind of explaining how he did that so anyway we started bringing in different folks leland scalar he's going to be the next one we're going to be launching with a whole series of um, i guess you would call them uh, collectible cards uh it's very interesting based on his book you know everybody loves me i don't know if you saw that book yeah. at all where he's got all the people so we we've done that now that's actually getting tied into the whole campaign uh, Ru uh, Rudy's building, uh, Rudy right down here is building a thing. No, actually Ruby. Ruby's actually doing, uh, going to be part of our collectible cards and is working on a Leland Scalar right now, which will be a, a rare card that'll be a Ruby inside the collectible card situation, you know, uh, uh, world. And so, yeah, we're just, this whole thing's just blowing up. We're bringing in, we have a whole series of products that we're getting ready to NFT. Uh, Ruby was our first out of the gate, but we have about a half a dozen other ones who are in the gate right now that are getting ready to unfold. And it's all going to tie in to the story where we're going to use this entire platform with all the artists and everybody to uh, start working on ways that we can support and fund a lot of this cancer research that's going on. So we're bringing in the whole community and it's going to grow. And thank you, Ruby, for starting this whole thing off. I think it's going to be an incredible journey. Uh, all our artist friends are jumping on board. So this thing's going to start growing throughout the year. And uh, we're very excited about it. So I want to go here. Yeah, I just found that yesterday. I'm sorry. Oh, I just found that ahead. yesterday. My buddy, Marky Ramon from the Ramones is on board. And Elliot Randall, former guitarist of Steely Dan. So a lot of my friends are coming to the forefront now. And we're all going to... Fuck cancer. Yeah. There you go. So, Maddie, this is a good segue into tell Scott, Rudy, and Jarrett what. Ruby. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what you have to go through? I think I'm going to change my name to Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be going I'm Rudy, not Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, it's it's really amazing to uh, hear that you guys are working on on that project because it's definitely something that resonates with me a lot. Uh, not in exactly the same sense, but I'm 21 now. So uh, about six years ago, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with advanced um, autoimmune liver disease. Um, you know, told there was no cure. Pretty much just take this handful of pills every day. Uh, We'll deal with the side effects when they happen and pretty much you know that's gonna that's gonna be your life and it's it's been very challenging you know I, I didn't feel like going to university was something that I was able to really do um, so I'm, I'm living at home right now and uh, it, it's tough so um, I actually just uh, as I was telling Ruby before um, Thank you. Opened up. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, I just opened up uh, my own clothing brand and it's called 478. And um, I mean, really, the idea behind this brand is really to just connect with ourselves and and find health, you know, within and, and not really necessarily give away our power to all those doctors and, you know, the ones prescribing us all those medications and really take our health into our own hands uh, mentally and physically. Um, so it's really all about, you know, manifestation, law of attraction, meditation. And those are, are practices that I've brought into my life um, recently and have honestly made the world of difference. I mean, even within the past six months is really when I started uh, studying and getting into these things. And like, I, I feel like such a different person um, just because I feel like there's, you know, hope that I can not necessarily completely cure myself of my disease, but it, you know, it sure helps with the daily day to day you uh, can. things. You can Thank you. Thank you. You well, can. I, yes. I, I do believe, you know, that that I can. And of course, it's a lot of hard work, but um, it's so worth it. And it's really just realizing that, 
you know, you do have a choice and, you know, you want to make those daily choices from a place of health and power rather than those choices from a person who's sick, you know, that person who was diagnosed however, however many years ago. And um, yeah, so that's really what my brand is about is just connecting with ourselves and creating a better, healthier lifestyle for ourselves. Well, you know, I think we're finding so well, many more people now that are that are finding these alternative ways and are actually beating it. And the power of of power of just our own minds and our consciousness and who we are. It's amazing how when we get these things in our head, how we kind of manifest stuff. If we can flip that that conscious thinking about who we are and what we are, it's amazing. Um, I mean, I have a bunch of friends that have been doing the same thing. And I actually just lost my best friend two days ago to cancer. Oh, and so, so he, um, you know, so this is, this strikes everyone. And so I, what's great mm -hmm. is I think we're looking with what Ruby, Ruby has done for, at least for me, is really thinking about a lot of these alternative ways and looking at all the different types of research where a lot of this stuff is now really starting to work. And so I'm excited mm -hmm. and I'm excited for you girl for thank you uh, so taking much. that path because that's what matters yes Yay, exactly exactly thank you so much and i mean it's something that people at any age can do um yep. i mean it's definitely challenging being a, a little bit younger because i find you know it's at that time in their life where people you know my age are like i don't care about my health you know i just want to drink and party and do this and i'm like no like our health is really like it, it's all we have like right. we, we do have a, a sense of control and power over it. And Ruby, I don't know if you've heard of him, but uh, someone I'd encourage you to look into is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so he, I follow him. I do his meditations every day, have all his books and I'm hoping to uh, to go see him once travel restrictions lift a yeah. little bit. Um, but I would definitely look into him. He's changed my life like so much. So maybe look well, into him as when well. I was... <laughs> When I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, they told me that they couldn't even operate because there were thousands of blood vessels surrounding the tumor. I would bleed out on the table. And he said, well, we're going to drill through your skull and do a biopsy and decide how much chemo and radiation to give you. And I said, no, not so quick. So he said, OK, let's wait six weeks. We'll take another MRI to see how much bigger it got. Because honestly, if we could save your life from six months to maybe a year, that would be terrific. And I said, terrific for you, not for me. <laughs> so I came home and my daughter flew out to Maui and she Google searched and found this world-renowned Chinese medicine acupuncturist living here on Maui. So I was in tremendous pain from my back mm. to my neck around into my eyes, almost in tears. She said, dad, you gotta go see him. You gotta, I said, okay. So I go to see him and uh, he said, do you really want to live? And I said, yeah, I have a lot more paintings to do. And he said, okay. Well, we can beat this thing. And I said, yeah, okay. And then he starts banging my head and smacking my face and sticking pins all over me. And I come home and my daughter said, so how do you feel? I said, he's a freaking quack. He's banging my head. I have a brain tumor. Well, I went to sleep that night and I woke up the next day zero pain, zero. And he said, I want you to go. I want to see you every other day. I want you to go to the beach every day and meditate for an hour and a half. And my mantra was go away, go away, go away. Well, six weeks later, I had the MRI and the head neurosurgeon of Kaiser calls me up. And he said, Ruby, have you been taking steroids? I said, no, I don't take anything. I said, why? Figuring now he's going to tell me I have three months to live. And he said, it's completely gone. Your tumor is gone. Wow. And I said, are you looking at somebody else's MRI? He goes, no. 
I've never seen this, but it's gone, not a trace. Wow. I didn't believe it. I said, well, give me two discs, uh, the first MRI and the second. I sent it to the head of Lenox Hill Neurosurgery and Mount Sinai in L.A. They both called me back saying, incredible. It's gone. Wow. wow. So... That's, That's pretty miraculous. It, <laughs> it, the tumor That's... was bigger than a quarter, they said. Wow. wow. That That's an so incredible crazy. story. So, so it's, it's the power of the mind and the power of, exactly. of healing and what it can do is incredible. And it's very- It truly is. It yeah. really is. And it's not given yeah. enough credit nowadays, I find. So it's really great that, you know, I, I feel like everyone's starting to come back to it and really realize its true power. And it's just so we amazing. We have so to much power in our minds. We to, do. To set our path. Yeah. So Danielle, and people just give in and say, okay, I'm going to die. Yeah. Danielle, and, yeah and, they, and they give up. Yeah. Danielle, your thinking yeah. on this is what from Portugal? Yeah, this is incredible, uh, very inspired, very inspiring, you know, uh, just like a story, I also had uh, my, it's, it was my, my husband's uh, aunt, you know, that she was also um, diagnosed with a breast cancer, it was very long time ago, and they also told her, told her that she wouldn't live more than six months, you know, six months will, would be a miracle for you and they decided to to do the cameo for her just to you know for a, a matter of conscious you know just to be relieved that they tried something with on her mm -hmm. and she did and she beat the cancer and then after this first one she she got three more different in other parts of the the body she beat all of them and she died very very old lady <laughs> cozy wow. and you know she has lived a beautiful life she has lived a beautiful life and it's amazing to know these stories and also to raise awareness for for those uh diseases you know both cancer or both um like med has you know that i i don't know if it's considered rare you know but it, that we are so busy in our business today that we don't pay attention to this don't pay attention that this can take on everyone you know i myself i also have something very strange it's a, a tumor in my head also but it's not cancer it's benignant but it's so rare that it uh even for my specific, there is no uh, uh, records in medicine register the way the, the place it's located in my head, you know. And what sucks up, <laughs> sorry for the word, but in these cases is that because it's rare, nobody is conscious about, nobody is aware on how it conditions your life, you know, your quality life. And it, it, that it's amazing to to be surrounded by people like Ruby, you know, who has gone through this amazing miracle. You know, it's very important that people uh, talk more about this case because we we are so um, you know with things that are superficial. We, we don't go, yeah, yeah. This is important to talk about this. So, so Jared, let me, and the beautiful this. thing, I'm, I'm, I'm well, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying how you know everything happens for a reason. Exactly. And and there's a reason for it. I mean, I knew coming up for me personally, it was my landmark of creating the mouth and tongue for the stones, and then how I fell in and met Scott and Jared and how what we've done is really revolutionizing the art world by having this whole new world of NFTs where they make a painting come alive. And it's just very exciting. I feel like I'm in the frontier on the wild, wild west. You know, it's just going to explode and change. And Jared's genius and Scott and, you know, it's just mushrooming. It's very exciting. 
It's given me a whole new life of creativity. Yay. <laughs> so Jared, on this on the social media side of stuff, how do you, how do you take this? Where do you go from here? It's, well, the, the whole cause is, is basically kind of what we've all been talking about. I mean, cancer touches everyone. It, it's it's everywhere. I mean, my mom's a cancer survivor too. It's my my mom's twin died of brain cancer when you know they were really young. It's 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 just something that that we all need to like focus on and coming out of this pandemic and we're all kind of scattered and all the depression, like it just felt like this was like such a good thing that we could all come together on and like inject some positivity and unity back into the world, you know, because we've all been so segregated and and it's just so much polarization and and anger. Like this is, it's just trying to flip the script and do something really positive with people and show them a new way while integrating this kind of exciting NFT space and educating people about what it is and how we're bringing the power back to content creators and direct to consumer marketing. And, you know, there's, there's so many different things kind of rolled into this that, that we're just doing a lot of really cool things at the same time. And I, th- I think the biggest thing that comes out of this is just the unity of the message. It's like artists being able to go and deliver their stuff in a brand new way. And like Ruby said, it is, it is the wild west. I don't even know if it's the wild west. I call it dirt and cactus. You know, it's, I think it's pre wild west right now, but um, it, it's, we're definitely kind of like doing something that's never been done before. We're doing it around something that, that really impacts people's lives and is important to all of us. And it's, it's just so many things kind of rolled into one and I'm just excited to be a part of it. And the art, art community, the music community, like where we all come from, you know, like all of my kind of like nineties and early two thousands music friends are involved in this, you know, Scott's has his music community. And then one of our other partners, Dennis is, is really plugged into kind of the opera and the jazz and the Broadway world. And it's cool to see this entire just community come together around this thing. That's just bigger than all of us and means so much to everyone that's part of it. And, and we're really impacting the world. And this is a long campaign. And the coolest thing about it is that Ruby is, is kind of the beating heart of it now. Like he, he is the story. He's the one that kind of made, made this real for everyone. And so he's going to be included in all of our clients rolls out, rolled out uh, throughout the year. Like we're including some Ruby paintings in like Leland Scholar's NFT packages. And we're going to be calling them Rubies. And there's going to be incentives and kind of things tied in with that throughout the year, because we really want to create symmetry of message for everyone that's involved in this, because that's kind of how we make these things happen, right? So it's just a lot of people waving the same flag at the same time. So Scott and- uh, and-, and the very exciting thing is we just launched this last Friday here on Maui. And right out of the gate, we sold the first one for $1.1 million. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it was, uh, none of us were really ready for any of this because like, this is a brand new space. And even when Ruby was telling, you know, the story live from the video that's kind of going all over right now, like I, I knew that, that Ruby was, was sick, but I didn't even know the details of that until he kind of like dropped that bomb on us. So the whole thing has just been a very kind of real time experience. And it's just, it's, you can feel the energy, like, like there's something happening here and, and we're all part of it together and we're all just doing it. Like we're, this is kind of a, societal societal revolution and it's cool to be a part of it jared how can people reach out to you we got about two minutes uh just find us you know you can google cosmic wire again my artist producer stuff is under blazar you know they're all very uh, researchable uh, domains your ruby store is ruby mazer nft.com and this is kind of like the first That's one ruby ruby r-u-b-y m-a-z-u-r right <laughs> Even though he may be the Rudy story, um, he is Ruby. <laughs> and, and Scott? Oh, yeah, mine's everything is I A M Scott Page. I am Scott Page <clears throat> across, the, across the board. So you can just find me on all of those platforms there. Right. We're, we're very vocal. We're very active. Like anyone that talks to us, we're kind of clapping back at right away because this is a very kind of like guerrilla marketing person to person thing. And that's what this has always been. So we, we, the more people in the community that kind of get involved with us, that's, that's what we're all about. And then I'm setting up a show for you guys to come in the studio for Scott and uh, Jared. J- Scott, yeah. we're working at, we're just going to nail down the date. All right. Yep. And then we'll get Sounds good, man. So uh, Maddie, give your social media links. Yeah, so my personal is Maddie underscore Rose 223. And then um, my website is 478shop.com. And the, uh, the brand's Instagram is uh, 478 underscore official. Danielle? DanielleMartins.com. Danielle Martins official on social media. And Danielle Martins everywhere. 
<laughs> so, so Ruby and Rudy, you get the final word. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everybody to think positive, be strong, and you can kick its ass. Yeah. You can't get any better than that. I've, That's you can't. I've can't been get getting. I've been getting hundreds and hundreds of messages on social media. How I inspire them with their cancer or their mom's cancer. Or this, we can all do. If I could do it, anybody could do it. Think positive. Take a half hour. Go to your bathroom. Go to your bedroom quiet and just tell it to go away you could do it you could hey, do Ruby. it so social media links go ahead well like jared said ruby mazer nft.com if you want to bid on one of my collection of paintings my website is ruby mazer gallery.com and social media is rock underscore n underscore ruby. Rock I'm in ruby. the Holly Fine Art Gallery on Maui. As of August 6th, I'll be in the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas. August 7th in the Planet Hollywood Wiling Gallery. And uh, in the fall, I'll be in Lake. <laughs>